screen here and you notice this is now it's getting to SQ light in particular. SQ light is kind of known as more the old fashioned way of doing things in Android. <clears throat> the about two thirds of the chapter, if not three quarters, talks about using Android Room, and that's something that's built on top of SQLite to try to make it easier for you, all right? But as they say, it's a software library. The one thing that's kind of weird about it, even though it doesn't look like it, basically what SQLite by itself does is it saves everything into one table, even though it allows you to make other tables, all right? So again, I don't want to sit there and read this to you. You can take a look. Okay, you can take a look at it right here, all right? When they do talk transactional, there's a few things in here that I would like to say. If you do click the link here, I'm not going to, you get to the SQLite database. Now, one of the things that I did provide for you, if you're interested, this thing here, this is, this is a culmination. It's about 25 or 30 pages, but it's about six different articles from uh, Apion, android.com and there is you don't have to install it it comes on your machine but here's the data types and the commands i realize you probably can't even see this it's okay all right but they go through the different data types that are available in there some of the commands the dml the ddl and what you realize when you look at it it's all the stuff we've already done all right it's it's select it's insert it's delete it's update and then it's alter table or, or database or whatever, and create database or whatever, and drop database or whatever. So, I mean, there's really not anything that's new in there. The operators are the ones that you're used to, the arithmetic operators, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The relational, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, um, equal to, which is the double equal sign, or not equal to where you can use either an exclamation point followed by an equal sign or a less than sign followed immediately by a greater than sign. <clears throat> the other kind of stuff we learn using the word and, using the word or, using the word not, using the between clause, the in clause, or the not in clause. You can even go in and you can do more advanced queries and you can use, for example, like the exists clause. All right. So the, what's in there too are all the clauses. So it explains the where in detail, the like clause in detail, the limit, the order by, the group by, the having, and the distinct. And those are all things that we have discussed in earlier classes and you've got a chance to work with all of them. What you're going to see if I can get it up and working in just a little bit <clears throat> is that the interface for using this, it's just, it's not good it's not good when you compare it to what we're used to in either PHP my admin that we looked at a little bit last year or even the what's available to you in SQL server all right and then finally there's a, a small article in here not that small I guess it's about seven or eight pages called insert read delete and update operations in SQLite and they go through an actual program that's in there and that's the the program is not that big or, or that great or anything <clears throat> but they explain when you when you run a regular SQLite program what you have to do. You're going to see that in just a couple minutes when we go over the example that I that I've done. All right, I think that was it from there. Yeah, that's good enough. All right, I'm not going to run through this. I mean, this is really elementary from stuff that you've looked at before. The only thing I would mention in here. <clears throat> is you should get used to um, every single table that you cre you create, you should have a primary key that's called underscore ID, because that's basically, that's what the system is looking for, all right? You can have, um, you also can have composite or con concatenated primary keys if you need to do that, all right? Now, I think it was about a week ago, somebody had asked about this, and <clears throat> I talked a little bit about ACID, and that's what you see on your screen right here when they talk about transactions. ACID, as it says, atomicity, basically when, when you go and you can set up 
your database as a series of transactions. And if you want, you can have multiple transactions and put them all into the same file. And if you put them all into the same file and you tell them to basically run as a group, then that is a combined transaction. And with atomicity, either everything succeeds or everything fails. All right. So they, they mentioned the example in here, if the disk is interrupted by a power crash or some kind of crash, then basically it's as though you did nothing to it. So if you've got 10 operations, even if you've done the first nine and they've succeeded, if the, if the machine goes down or you have a problem with the 10th one, the first nine are just rolled back. All right, consistency. We talked about this even in the terms of object-oriented programming. And the idea with, consist, with consistency is you must always leave your data in a consistent state. All right. Isolation, that's not a big thing in here, but it is a big thing when you have a lot of people using the same database at the same time. We would all be using our own copies, of course, but if we had a server and we were all using them at the same time, then you, you've got to come up with some kind of a concurrency policy where if two users try to access the same piece of data at the same time, you've got to figure out how to do that. The worst way that you can do it and the way some places do it is called last in wins. So if I'm working, uh, if, if, if I've got a table open and so does, let's just say, Abby, all right, we both have the same table open and I make changes and I write them and then she makes changes after me and she writes them, she overwrites my changes and you never see them. So what most, when most of the time when you, you have, um, you, you set it up where you've got a concurrency method where if somebody opens a table and somebody else tries to open it, they're not allowed to until the first person is finished with it. All right. And then finally, the last one, as it says, is durability, meaning that after you complete a transaction, it is saved permanently. All right. So any modifications that you create persist. <clears throat> they give some examples here. There's nothing big, nothing we haven't already talked about. All right. Query language, again, doesn't really pay to talk about this because we have. You know what a select statement is. You know what the from clause is, what the where clause is, what an order by is, what a limit is, et cetera. All right. <clears throat> and there's some examples in here. But again, I think if you took a look at those, there's nothing that, that you haven't already seen. All right. What's the kind of nice about it is what you start to realize is, wow, this is pretty much the same SQL we wrote in SQL Server. It's pretty much <clears throat> the same SQL that we wrote and, and used um, in, in uh, when we were looking at the MySQL stuff, all right? So they do say here, it says you can practice creating and querying <clears throat> databases. What this is, is it's a fiddle website, but it's set up so you can go and create your own databases on it and then run your own queries on it, all right? <clears throat> all right, as far as it says there as queries for SQLite, it says um, you can send them as what are called raw queries or as parameters, all right? <clears throat> With a raw query, as it says right there, it runs the query and it returns what's called a cursor. So the idea with with it and the example I'm going to show you is going to use raw queries. But with a raw query, <clears throat> the idea is you already know what it is you're looking for. It's a fairly generic type of select statement. On the other hand, all right, when you use parameters, the idea is at runtime, you can figure out what it is you want to pass to the system. All right. One of the most important things in here, although they give it virtually no time, is they talk about cursors, okay? And what happens is you run a query when you get a result back of multiple records, okay? What you get along with that result set is what's called a cursor. And a cursor is a pointer that by default will point to the first row of the result set. 
all right? And typically what you do with a cursor is you iterate your way through and you go through everything that's in there and, and uh, then you can work with stuff a record at a time if you want to do that. All right. I'm not going to spend hardly any time on this. I've looked at it. It's pretty heavy stuff. The idea when you talk about Room, they've built a layer, a software layer on top of SQLite. Why? Because someone has determined that writing regular SQLite is too big of a pain in the butt. All right. So we should come up with a better way of doing it. This is what they came up with. All right. And as it says, it utilizes uh, Android architecture components and it use, utilizes the DAO, the data access object. All right. It also works with live data, which is one nice thing about it. So the idea is they talk about observables and stuff in here, but the idea is you're always getting the latest and greatest, most up to date copy. So they start by talking about it here about these architecture components. This is okay. All right. It says there the components provide guidance on app architectures with libraries for common tasks. The idea is what you are able to do is if you understand Android, Java, and Android really well, you basically can write fairly complex database programs, even if you know nothing about a database. All right. Because again, this is written above it. And what you're finding today is there actually has been kind of a push away from SQL and in, in some companies at least a push towards more no SQL types of things. And from the little bit of, of stuff that I've looked at as far as that goes, much of that is saying what, what they have there is what are called object relational mappers or, or ORMs. And what you're doing is you're mapping to code as opposed to mapping to an actual database component itself. So they show these components. Again, I would just be reading it to you. I don't want to do that. All right. But as mentioned there, you're working with live data. So what happens is when the data or as the data changes, the, the um, user interface is immediately updated. All right. And it's told about the change. They've got some definitions here. Again, I don't want to sit and read to you. All right. It's funny because they say here that an entity is a class that describes a table. Really in the, you know, the past when we ever talked about an entity, an entity typically in database is an entity is what the table is about. In other words, it's a person, place, thing, or kind of like an event or something like that. All right. You know, a lot of, a lot of books will say it's a noun, you know, person, place, or thing. But it could be something that's technically not a thing. It's more a concept. All right. So as it says here, additional storage options like a web server are omitted. The persistence library creates and it mains, maintains the database for you. You will see in the example that I, I have if you haven't looked at it yet. And it's really a simple example. All right. There's only like three fields in it. But the idea is that code that to actually create the database and some of the code to manipulate the database, you don't have to write anymore, all right? DAO, as it says, it's a mapping of queries to functions. So here's their definition of room, a database layer on top of SQLite that takes care of mundane tasks, such as creating the SQLite open helper. You're gonna see that in just a minute. With the open helper, the idea is once you create uh, a class that's based off of SQLite Open Helper, you immediately have to add two different methods to it, and that's the on create and the on upgrade. Again, you'll see those in just a minute. All right. It says repository, a class for managing multiple data sources. One of the key things that's in here is the view model. Notice what it says. It provides data to the user interface, and it acts kind of like an adapter. All right. As it says, it's the communication center between the data and the user interface itself. Notice too, hides the back end from the UI, all right? And finally there, as it says, is live data, a data holder class that follows what's called the observer pattern. It means that basically you're able to kind of 
as you're working through the database, you're able to in real time see your changes. That's the way that I look at this, all right? Always hold cache as the latest version of the data. And it notifies the program or whatever this is whenever the data has changed, all right? To do this, typically you have to go in and you have to make some changes to Gradle files. They show you what those are. Basically, they're adding room in here. All right. So much of the rest of this that's in here is just kind of going over what those terms they already mentioned. As you can see, there is an entity. It doesn't look very different from the kinds of stuff we have worked with. When you work with entities, you'll notice in here, there's what are called entity annotations, all right? So you do a lot of this, as far as you tell the system you're about to create an entity, you want the system to create the table for you, and you want it to be called word table. When you do that kind of stuff, you, you basically annotate by telling what the primary key is, all right? You annotate by saying not null, which means that this can never be null. For instance, as they mentioned, primary key should always have the at non null annotation. But again, you are basically specifying this in code as opposed to putting it into an actual DBMS. And that's how you'd put in your columns. So when you look at it, this is the kind of thing that you end up doing. All right. And it's not. It's actually not that different from the stuff that we've been doing, except you're telling the system, hey, we've got these three fields. I don't care what they are. But they are basically, this will be the primary key of our database. Since auto-generate is true, it'll automatically increment too. And these will be the other two columns that are in the database. These will be their names, et cetera, all right? And it says their getters and setters are not shown for brevity. Well you'd have a getter and a setter for each one of these, including the ID, if you wanted to do that, all right? Or you could just have, for example, a setter for the ID. I'm sorry, a, a, a getter for the ID. If you didn't want to allow the user to set their own IDs, all right? But the idea is, again, we don't have a separate class that we use for putting in our database stuff. Although in the example, I'm gonna show you in a couple minutes, you do have that. All right, again, all this stuff melds together in its own way, all right? It says the set of DA objects, DAO objects rather, for, performs the main component. There, there's, the, the write-up in here isn't bad. I actually preferred the one I didn't, uh, I don't have it up right now, but um, if you go out to developer.android.com, they have a pretty good write-up on Room. It's probably about, six or, or four or five page read. And then they said, if you want to do it more the old fashioned way, then there's a link to the SQL, the way that we're going to do it. That's probably seven or eight pages, but they're both well written. All right, again, we talked about live data already. My guess is that you're probably not going to end up using this, at least not in here. But again, I've given you some, some, uh, some links in, in a couple articles. I gave you an article in here that I looked through, all right, and I thought it was pretty good. Where was it? It was how to use Room and Android, all you, need to go, all you need to know to get started. And again, it's a fairly simple article, all right, and the guy was good enough that he put his, uh, he put his source code out there on GitHub. So I grabbed that and got that for you as well. All right, they go through live data. All right, and I don't think I'm gonna to touch anything else that's in here. I wouldn't do it any justice anyway. So again, you can read that if you're so inclined. But <clears throat> what I would like to do before we go on is I just wanted to show you a couple different things. All right, so let me, I'm gonna to have to change my share in here in just a minute. All right. So this first thing, I came across this 
because uh, I, I was watching all sorts of videos and good, bad, or indifferent. And I hope when I say this, I hope no one thinks that, I, that I'm at all racist or anything else, but some of the people who created some of the best ones out there, I don't think English is their first language. And oftentimes it's very hard to understand because when they get going, and I know I do the same thing, but when they get going, oftentimes what happens is they start talking faster and it's just really hard to figure out what's going on. So I found this out here and this is one of the things I gave you. I gave you a thing of URLs. This guy's name is Shad, and he's a teacher, I think, at Grand Canyon University. And he has literally hundreds of videos out there. And I don't mean like I've got where I, I tape my class sessions. He's just gone out and created tons of stuff. I thought that the one that he did in here was really good. I've started working on it. I didn't finish it. So I just, I thought, well, what the heck? Maybe he's got it out there on GitHub. I looked on GitHub and it wasn't there. So I put a comment in there and I said, you know, thanks for doing the video and you, you guys, you've got a lot of really terrific information. Do you provide the code out on GitHub or someplace else? And he wrote back and he said he doesn't provide code because typically when he goes through something like this, he has his students key the stuff in as they're going through it. But what I'm telling you is if you want a really good example of using just regular SQLite, in Android, I, I, it's better than the one I'm going to give you. This is what I'd go through. All right. <clears throat> so let me close a couple things here. All right. So <clears throat> with that said, what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, change my share again here. and start to go through the project that I put in here. Now, just so you're aware of it, <clears throat> this project I took directly out of one of the handouts, all right, that I made available for you. And it's, I, I guess I don't have it up right now, so I don't remember what it's called. <clears throat> but it's a fairly simple example, but what I would like to do is to go through everything that's in here, all right, if we get it all done by the, you know, by 40 minutes, that's fine, then we're done for the day. But the activity main is actually, it's pretty simplistic. Let's see. There it is. Okay, so up here, this will be a generated um, primary key. It'll be an underscore ID field. This is the name of a product. This is the name of a product quantity. All right. This is just an in field, but it's automatically generated. This is the equivalent of a text field. And this is also an in field. All right. After you start filling up the database with data, you can go and you can put in the, any name you want, any quantity you want, click add record and it'll add it to the database. All right, you can put in any name you want in here, just the name, click find record and it'll find the first one that matches what you put in and it'll fill in all the information for you. Finally, if you've got a record up, okay, and if it's got just a product name in it or if it's got everything in it, you click delete, it'll remove everything from there. All right, so again, I think at least probably the interface makes sense. All right, so it's a, this is a text view, edit text, edit text, and three buttons. All right, I also set it up because they didn't do this in their example. They didn't do any kind of um, validation. So I put in at least a, there's a minimum of validation in here. All right, in the... Strings file, not a whole heck of a lot in here. I don't know why it's not letting me come on. But um, the stuff for the buttons, add record, find record, delete record, and then just hints for the, for the two fields. All right, I had one for the, for the product ID, 
but since it was self-generated, I thought that was silly to actually even have that in there, so I got rid of it. All right, the next thing they have you doing here, and again, this is where it starts to be different from between what they have here and what they have in room, all right? And that is we create a class, okay? Well, when you work with room, you end up putting basically your database and your tables and stuff in this class. Here we don't. So you can see that each product has an int, which for, for your ID, and that's your primary key, a product name, and a product quantity. Then we've got a no arc constructor that does nothing. We've got a full arc constructor where you can pass in an ID. And we've got a two arc constructor where you cannot pass in an ID. All right. And then after that, basically everything that's here, they're just getters and setters. All right. But one thing I did want to mention about this, it's not a big thing, but I, you know, sometimes I forget to do things and then I feel bad later. But just so you see these, if I came in here, in fact, just to show you, I'm going to remove these three constructors. All right. And, and then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to, as we've done, I'm going to click code and generate. But now I'm going to choose constructor. All right, and I will not choose any of the fields that are here, none of the three. And I'll click OK, and boom, there's my NOAR constructor. Oops. All right, and then we had our full R constructor, so the same thing. Click code, click generate, again go to constructor, highlight all three fields, and boom, there is our full R constructor. All right. And then finally, the same kind of thing with uh, just the two R constructors. So again, code, generate constructor. And this time we highlight everything except the ID. And boom, there is our two argument constructor. And again, just the idea that a lot of this stuff can be our, um, automated for you. There are a lot of things that you can do with the Android Studio Editor. I don't know most of them. That's why I haven't been teaching you them, because I don't know most of them. But the rest of the stuff that's in here are all getters and setters. All right? Okay. So as we go on then, the next thing we have is this is the database class. All right? Now I'm getting a message here from the system that says, I've got about five more minutes. So I'll, I'll go through at least this one, all right? Everything that you work on in here comes out of here. You'll notice that we're importing android.database.sqlite.sqlite-open-helper, and we're also extending that. <clears throat> Again, you may or may not have seen this before, but when I created this class, right here. Whoops, that's not the one I want. There we go. But when I created the class and I right mouse clicked on the package name, all right, and shows new class, I put in here my DB handler, just like we've done before. But then for the super class, I typed in SQLite open helper. So it automatically put the extends in for me. Yeah, not a big thing one way or the other, really. But when you look at what's in here, again, none of these, um, I put in virtually all of the documentation in here because I wanted you to understand at least hopefully what was going on in here. All right. So you'll notice that in here we've got three variables before we've done anything else. The first variable is the version of the database. And it's always recommended that any time you make any change, regardless, an alter table, you know, a create or a whatever, that you always go in and you up that number. When you first run the database, the on create, all right, the on create is automatically called, automatically. But other than that, it, it doesn't have to be called again because it's already been created. But every time you come in here and you change the version, what happens is then on upgrade is called. 
which drops the original table and reproduces it with your new changes. All right, I, you know, a lot of the stuff like the name should just make sense. All right, so this is the name of the database. This is the name of the table. All right, okay. Then we've got, as it says, we're defining the fields in here. And you might say, well, why do you have to do that? You don't have to, but it is basically the way most people seem at least to do it is like this. All right, they define the names of their fields as they set them up as constants. All right, it reads a little bit better when you're starting to go through all of these operations. Then there's the constructor. What in this case it says, hey, parent. Again, what's the parent? SQLite Open Helper. So SQLite Open Helper, you handle setting up the context. I'm, I'm giving you that database name already. All right. The factory is some stuff it basically does in the background for you, and I'm giving you the version. All right. Then there's on create, and I purposely took this, and it's believe me in there in the, their example, it's not in multiple lines. All right. But you may or may not remember some of this stuff, and I'm going through this now with the um, C sharp class right now. That some of the stuff that is that is in there. All right. Some of the stuff that's that's in there. It's, it gets really heavy, you know, and you get you get a combination. There's not, not so much in this example, but with some of these queries, you've got a combination of uh, double quotes and single quotes. But I thought this made sense. Create table. It's going to be called table products. Got a column ID, which is an integer, which is a primary key. You can even put in there if you want to, want to rather, auto increment. All right. And here's the product name. It's a type text and a quantity of type integer. I already mentioned the upgrade to you and what happens when you do an upgrade. It drops the table, then it recreates it by calling this on create all over again. All right. Then what is left in here is we've got three different routines. The first one is called add product. All right. The next one will be called find product, and the last one will be called delete product. Now I'm just about out of time here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna generate a new URL. So I'll literally be back in about five minutes. Looks like it's about 137, 136. So I'll be back by 140, you will have that, but feel free to drop off right now, and I hope that you'll come back again. We'll finish it up in 10 or 15 minutes. All right, that's, and so go ahead and just drop off.